Hello grade 12, we're doing arrays, inserting and deleting from arrays. Single arrays, not two dimensional. So this is a program I will use. It will involve two types of inserting. Inserting in a position that we have chosen. Inserting a particular name into a particular position. And then the second button for inserting will be sorting first and then inserting after we've sorted the array. So to do that, um, we need a text file and an array. So I've got a text file here with six names in it. The array itself has got a maximum of 10 indices, 10 boxes that can be filled and a counter to um, count obviously how many names there are, to hold how many names are actually filled here. We are filling the array itself uh, in, from the text file in on activate. And I know you all know how to do that. Uh, while we read from the text file, we increment a counter and we say error names, square brackets, r count equals the line that we are reading from the text file. And at the same time, I'm displaying the Richard and so on. Rich edit, sorry, and the combo box. Because later on we will do, just now we'll do deleting. First we'll do inserting. Now the mechanics behind inserting, if you want to insert, this is a text file, sorry, we're going to go to an Excel spreadsheet which displays a text file once it's been read from and put into an array. So this is how the array will look in your memory of your computer once you, when you run the program for the first time. What happens when you run the program? I have it displaying in the rich edit, the array is displayed in the rich edit over there. Now these are the the names that are in the text file. I'm just making a diagram here. Um, our count will be six in this case. And when we want to introduce Linda Kuchle in box number three, let's say we want to put this name, Linda Kuchle, in position number three, index number three of your array. Then what happens, what you have to do is all of these names have to be copied or moved up. You need to make space for Linda Cookley, so everything's going to be moved up so that we can then go and slot Linda Cookley into box number three in this case. So this is just sample data, so to speak. What we now need to do is think how the code will work. Well, for starters, we're definitely going to use a loop because we're going to be repeating operations. We're going to move one at a time. Let's go and put Nina in seven, John's going to go to six, Sipo in number four is going to go to five, Yusuf in number three is going to go to four. Okay, so that's what the operation will basically do. But it's not going to move anything, it's just going to say that box number seven will be equal to what box number six is, and box number six will be equal to box number five. Box number five is going to be equal to what box number four is. Box number four is going to be equal to what box number three is. And that will be it. But we're going to have a method and it has to, um, we have to use a for loop because we know we're going to do repeat instructions all the time. We can't use anything else, a, a while or, or repeat loop is a loop that um, has a condition that will stop it from running when we don't know how many times we're going to do something. But in this case, we do know that we are going to go from the last box of the array down to the insertion point. And that is what we are going to do. So we, if the last box is 6, then 6 plus 1, which is 7, will be equal to whatever 6 is. And that will be part of our for loop. And then um, box number 5 plus 1, which is 6, will be equal to whatever 5 is. Then box number 4 plus 1, which is 5, will be equal to what box, whatever box number 4 is. Then box number 3 plus 1, which is 4, that's going to be equal to whatever box number 3 is. So we'll go from the last box down to the position of our box, and that will be our for loop. And this is how we're going to write it. Yes, and once we've gone through each one, then we can go and take this name here, 
and go and put it in this number three which will be our pos the position that we want to insert it into so let's go and write the code for this um, double click inside this button let's go and get our variables quickly our pos integer so our pos is going to be my position that i want to insert it Let's go and store them from our um, input components. Uh, spin edit one dot value. Right now we're going to use a for loop. So let's go make another for loop counter, and I'm going to call it k. For k equals our count down two. Uh, pause. Oh, can you see that is what I actually was doing? I was demonstrating over here. We're going to go from our count, which will be six, and we'll, and we'll go down to three. The code is going to be like this. We'll say ARR names, square brackets, K plus one, be equal to ARR names, square brackets, K, which translates directly to what I've demonstrated to you inside this um, uh, spreadsheet so that's what's going to happen we're going to say if we're going to start from our count k equals our count down to our pos then we'll say k plus one which will be seven will be equal to nina okay and that's why k is equal to 6. But if k is a 5, k plus 1, which is 6, will be equal to John, the previous one. So then k goes to 4. k plus 1 is 5 if k is 4. So box number k plus 1, which is 5, will be equal to box number k, which is us as sepal. Okay, that's if, box, if k is 4. If k is 3, then box number k plus 1, which will be 4, will be equal to Yusuf, which will be box number three, and it will stop there. The loop will stop at this position. And then what we do in our code is we do the following. We say ARR names, square brackets, I pause, will be equal to S name. And that's the same as doing this. I pause is three, not so. Okay, Yusuf was there, but Linda Cooker will just go in its place, overwrite it. And that's what will happen. That's that code. Now, there's one important thing that we always forget to do, and that is we must remember, if we look at our spreadsheet, that our count is no longer 6. Can you see it's now 7? So if we don't increment our count, we will have Nina left out. So we have to go increment our count over here. And that is that done. Now we can go and display the array. I'm writing a procedure called display. This is modular program. You need to include that in your, um, where if, if it's told in an exam that you must use modular programming, then you need to do that for any code that you might be repeating. And why am I going to repeat a display procedure here? Well, because there's this button that I want to display, there's this button that I'm going to display the array, and there's that button as well where I want to display the array after I have done the job of doing those buttons and it might be a good idea I think more than a good idea to clear the rich edit and whenever you want to display or do anything with an array more than often you're going to use a for loop so we get a for loop counter and when you're displaying the whole array then you know we're definitely using a for loop and you go from one to the last box of the array <clears throat> there are names, square brackets, K. Remember? Refer to K over here. Not our count. We go from 1 to our count. Our count is the big number. K is the one that's going to go up to our count from 1. Right, so that didn't take so long to write, but it's still better than writing it over and over again. So that's why we use modular programming, making our own procedure called display. Okay, so we can run the program and see what happens. 
<coughs> okay, I have an error. Uh, down to our pause. Oh, I forgot the assignment statement there. See? Colon equal. Right. So I'm going to type num Kuchle. Oh, sorry. And then box number three. Insert in position. Let's hope for the best. There it is. Box number three. One, two, three. Okay, so that's that done now. The next one is a difficult one because we want to sort the whole string, I mean the whole array. This uh, array here, we want to sort it so that it looks like this in alphabetical order. Now we all know from grade 11 our sorting algorithm, so let's put that in, in action first before we do anything else. So this is the one for sorting. We want to sort it first. Now, for sorting, in case just to remind you, I use this method. I use two for loop variables and then I use a temporary string. And then I go from for k equals 1, 2, I count, minus 1, do. So we go from 1 to the second last box. And then we have another for loop, nested for loop here, or for loop inside of a for loop for L equals K plus one, two, R count, do. Begin, and then I put begin and end. And then I ask a question. So what is this doing? Let's have a look at our diagram quickly, just to remind you of the sorting. What's gonna go, um, K is gonna go from one to six, and L is gonna go from K plus one, which will be two, all the way down to seven. Then, I'm going to say if AR names square brackets k, if that is greater in alphabetical sense, um, uh, strings can be compared. One uh, a string with um, it's all uh, numbered. Uh, the a's are are um, less numerical value than the b, and so on. If AR names character k is greater than AR names character L, then we will do a swap algorithm and we'll do this s temp equals error names square brackets k and then we say error names we're keeping box number k safe and we're going to say box number k because we're swapping them around box number L and then we're going to give error names box number L the value of S10. I know most of you will understand this and if you don't go back and revise your grade 11 work on sorting and um, uh, um, swapping. Now we are going to, once we've got it sorted, so this is going to be a bit tricky, we're going to, we don't have the index, okay, but we do, we are going to get the name of the person. In fact I'm going to display here the display to see I'm calling display again let's go and check to see so far what we've done so I will sort and insert character I'm just going to click the button so there we have it in alphabetical order can you see Nicholas is a smaller numerical value than Nina because it's NRC and Nina is NRN so you know that's all working fine so we're going to go now and find our insertion point for the name that we want to get from the um, edit box s name I can use s name again because it's local it was local in the other button click and it's local in this one oh, bdt name dot text sorry okay so we've got s name and we've got our sorted array let's go and have a look what's going to happen here Go to the sorted one. Here it is. Okay, so now if you want to insert, insert Linda Kuchle into 
This is gonna be his name, obviously. His name. Must be able to see. Okay, you want to insert insert, sorry, you want to insert Linda Cochlear into this array. If we look here, A J, it looks like it needs to go here again, not so. Because L comes after J, but it's before N. So what we're going to do, as soon as we, we're going to search through this array, and as soon as we find a name that's greater than the one that we want to insert, we're going to store that, and it just so happens to be box number three as well. Okay, that's just a coincidence. I didn't plan it that way. But basically, what we're going to take, Linda Kuchle will fit in. If you look at this physically, you can see it will fit there at that box, and then all of these will be moved up just like we did before. But first we have to find that position number three, so that's the tricky part. Let's go and do that. When you want to search through an array, when you're searching through an array, we go from one box to the next. See, we can look at this box. Is Linda Kukle greater than A, C, C, 4? No. I mean, yes, I mean, A, C, C, 4 is, is less than Linda Kukle. John is less than Linda Kukle. But Nicholas is greater than, so as soon as we hit on this na name, why is it greater than? Because the numerical value of n is greater than the value of l. So when we once we've hit the one, then we want to stop, don't we? We do want to stop. And if we don't stop, then our program will not work in this case. So it's always good to have a uh, procedure to stop, and we call it a Boolean flag. Fancy word for a little indicator to say, hey, we found it. And we always set our boolean flag to false. We want the processor to know that they've, you know, we found, we found the the position. Now, can you see that this loop is not going to be a for loop because we want to stop when we find a place. So there's going to be a condition. But we also need to go through every. If we don't find a place, we have to stop at some point. We have to stop as soon as we find we get to our count as well. So. There's a couple of things we have to worry about, but first of all, we know that we're going to have to use a while loop. Now, when we use a while loop, we're going to have to use some kind of a counter to get up from the first box to wherever we're going to stop. Either we're going to stop there, or we're going to stop at this our count here. Okay. And we can also call this our pause. We can make a counter for our pause that we're going to store. And we also need a counter to go from one to whatever, because we don't use our for loop count, for loop variable. We have to use some kind of counter. So I will make another counter called our num, and I will set our num equal to naught, and we'll say while our num, and we must we can have two things, two things that are going to stop. We want to stop when we find that, or we want to stop until we at the end. And in our while loop, we have to use two conditions with an AND. Because either one or the other must happen. While, you know, we'll stop while, while our num is less than or equal to our count. We can check out whether that equal sign is, is necessary just now. And be found. In other words, while we have not found it, we want to continue. While be found is false, equal to false. So while we are searching, we don't continue, I mean, we don't find a match, we don't find the, uh, the right answer, we don't find one that is greater than Linda Kuchle, because we want to stop as soon as we find a name that's greater than this name that we want to insert. While we're doing it, we're actually going to, we're going to use a while loop. So what will happen is when we get to the end, our num will then be greater than our count. But actually, it should be less than because as soon as we reach our count, then because we're starting at naught, and it depends on where we increment our num. So our num is going to be incremented, incremented, incremented until if our num is our is um, our count, we don't want the equal sign there because then we're going to increment our num here again, and we only want to go up to the number our count. We don't want to go one more than our count. Right, so as soon as we, um, if we don't get to the end, I mean, if we get to the end of the, sorry, if we get to the end of the array and we don't find 
and so you say this is a, a Z or, or some some other name the X or a Z then basically we'll go right to here and then we will stop and we have to we have to put that name at the end here so this is going to be a problem because B found while well, B found is false well if we find one name that's greater we want to stop so increment, increment i num so we're checking box number one it's now going to be one and then we ask a question if a r names square brackets i num if it's greater than s name then we know we found a place to insert then we can say b found equals true and r pos will now equal to whatever i num is Okay. And we will continue and it will continue. Oh, I haven't made a position, I mean, haven't made a variable R pos. Let's go and make a variable called R pos quickly. There we go. Then what's going to happen now is that we will um, have to decide what's going to happen after this loop. Okay. Well, we've got to ask the question, if B found is false, because then we're going to have to increment, you know, our, yeah, if B found equals false. After all of that, then we're going to increment our counter and say, error names, square brackets, our count, will be equal to s name okay but what about if we don't get to the end well better do an else yeah we better do an else else a r names square brackets are pause is equal to s name why because if we get to the end then we want to increment our counter and put the name over there if we if we find a match okay we find that box number um in, in this case nicholas is grading that then we know our pos is three but we don't just want to go and put it in there no 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 we don't want to just do that we have to do a whole thing we have to do our program our our, our for loop remember the for loop that we used before we moved everything up one we have to do this move it all up and then go and slot it in just like a previous little activity up here where is that button click we have to do this see so that's going to be something that we have to do so guys for want of save time on copying and pasting always remember copying and pasting is going to help you save time on the exam right so now, of course, I'm, I'm using a K here. <clears throat> That's fine. I can use that K there. Right. So I'm going to condense this. Now, why have I got an else? Because after this while loop happens, B find will either be true or it will be false. Because if it's still false, then we know we've reached the end of the array and we must go and increment our array number and put our name in there. Else, we're going to move all the things up, just like I showed you there, and then we're going to go and put that in. But we also have to increment our counter like we did there. Okay, and that is what we're doing. And guess what we do after that? Display. So, um, and remember this for loop over here, only doing one thing. Can you see, it's only one thing that's happening there. So that's why there's no begin and end. And after we've done all of that, we're going to put our name into the position. So I hope that's helped you. I'm going to run the program just to prove that it. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> there, I did it again. You know, I didn't put my sign in the statement. Let's hope it works now. <gasps> we have another problem. There, yeah, I keep forgetting my code on this because I'm typing too fast. Right, so let's go putting Lindo. There, in there, click on sort, and there it is. Perfect. 
Right, now very quickly we're going to do delete and then I'll now when you remove items from an array, so let's go and do delete. Okay, we'll do delete on this one. Okay. And we know now we've got seven. So if you want to delete Linda Cookley after you've added her, I know that sounds bad, but anyway, we're going to do it. Um, let's say uh, that we got this array of names. Okay, we've just added the name. Oh, and by the way, um, in this program, I've got this combo box. I should have filled the combo box as well when I did the the um, display. So let's go and do that quickly. Uh, EMB commands dot add. Again, they are now square brackets. Okay, can you see how copying and pasting is definitely helpful here and using modular design? Okay, the rest I just added the extra line. Then remember, when you're in two things inside a loop or an if statement or whatever, you always have begin and end. So, once you run this program and we've done, um, we've done this. We can then go and see that we can choose any name we want here to delete. Okay. But in my example, I'm just going to pretend I'm going to delete Linda Cookley back again, and then we're going to see how it works. Um, so let's go back to our example. When you delete, what happens is you're doing the reverse of inserting. Basically, you're basically if you're going to delete from this position, you're then going to take the next one after it and put it in its place. That's it. And then you take the next one and put it in its place. And you take the next one and put it in its place. So the one uh, after that, basically, that is what you're doing. That's the physical um, thing of deleting. You're not actually deleting. There's no delete involved here, such the word delete or anything. You're just replacing a box with another box. So for instance, now we'll go back again, save position, hand join it. So then all we do is take Nicholas and put it there over inside that box. So box number three is going to be replaced with box number three plus one. And box number four is going to be replaced with box number five, four plus one. Okay. Box number three is going to be replaced with box number three plus one. Box number four will be replaced with box number four plus one, which is five. Box number five is going to be replaced with box number five plus one, which is six. And box number six is going to be replaced with box number six plus one, which is seven. Now, this box number seven will still remain there. That item will still be there, but we won't access it because we're going to decrement our count by one element. So, isn't that fun? So, it looks like we're going in reverse. We're going from three to the number of elements minus one. Okay. Because remember, the number of elements was seven, and I'm going to go six is going to be equal to six plus one, and then we de decrement. So let's go and put that into effect quickly. We have to first go and search for the name, obviously, in the, in the array. So, hmm. And we have to have the string, and we also have to have the position. Now, you can see I'm not going to have a position here because the array will have the, the names in it, okay? All the names will be in. And by this stage, they will be sorted, right? And uh, let's just go back to what we were doing here. Okay, so <coughs> the array will have all the names in, okay? And we are going to go and look for, let's say we're going to look for Nicholas. And we're going to delete Nicholas. I'd say this is the array. Okay, I know it's not the, the array, original one, but anyway. Never mind. This is your example. So we're going to look for Nicholas. And when we find Nicholas, then we're going to store IPOS value. Okay. And then we're going to go from that position to number five in this case for this array. If you want to delete Nicholas, you'll go from three to five. 
because what we're going to say is if box box number three will be equal to box number four, won't it? And then box number four is going to be equal to box number four plus one. And then box number five will be equal to box number five plus one. And as you can see, we now got all the names except Nicholas. And all we do is decrement R count. So that is the process. And so we'll quickly go and first find the position of the item that we want to delete. So the person's going to choose a name using a combo box because that will make sure that the name is um, spelled correctly and everything. You don't have to worry about anything else. And I'm going to get the, the name from the combo box. And then I'm going to use a while loop, just like we did before. But of course, we actually want to stop searching when we find a match. Otherwise, our program could very well not give you the right answer. In fact, it won't give you the right answer if you don't. And we're going to have to stop when we find a match. I'll pause curve an integer. We also need a um, like a I'm, I'm, and we're going to get and I'm just like we did when we were searching before. We're searching in an array, so we actually need to have these conditions in place here. While I'm um, is, oh sorry, I've really got my while. I num is less than our count. Remember, we discovered that we cannot have an equal sign unless we increment our count. Yeah, I'll do it differently this time. We will start with I num equal to one. So we do slight different, slight difference to what we did before. Do begin and end. So I will go and check if ARR names square brackets are none and I can do that because there are box number one if that is equal to s name we've chosen s name from the combo box if it's equal to s name then we're going to say that we found it be found equals true and r pause equals i num i num being a counter that's going to go through from one i num is going to start at one and go all the way to i count minus one well no all the way to our count and the reason why it's going to go all the way to our count is because we've got to go through each box so if we're looking for the position that our r pods for our deleting the position for deleting that's what we're looking for first so if we want to delete, if you want to delete Nina, say we've got to go through each one and find Nina and then store the integer into our pods. That's what we're doing with this. Okay. Uh, we haven't finished this uh, loop yet. Why? Well, because I haven't incremented I none. The loop won't stop if I don't increment INUM. INUM will stay at 1 and it will carry on and on and on. It will be an unending loop. I need to move INUM. must be incremented, incremented each time until we get to R count. If it's R count, we can still go and check. So this is why this loop is different to the other searching loop where we started with naught and then I have, because I was incrementing INUM over here. And then I also need to have started 1. You know, we can't start at naught. So you've got to keep track of your counters inside your loops. This one was using num equal to naught, and then we said less than r count because we're incrementing num, r num there because we have to increment r num before we go into the array. It must be one. But over here, we're starting at one, and then we basically going straight the code, going to box number one, and then we go to box number two. The equal sign there will be well if r count if r count is six and we and we reach six. Then it'll safely go there and it'll increment our num to seven and then the loop will stop over there. All right. Now are we gonna get a case if B found equals false? Well, it's possible. If B found if B found is false after all of this loop, if in other words we didn't find a match, then we'll just show a message and exit in this case. <coughs> show message. 
Um, nothing to delete. We didn't find a match, and then we'll exit. Okay. That exit means the pro the pro uh, program will the procedure will end, not the program, just this procedure, this button click. So we can safely go and um, do the next thing that we have to do. We've got our pause, and that's all we need. We need our pause. Okay, position is where the name is in the. Um, let's just save and it changes up. It's saving in a delete um, Nina. Okay, save it a delete Nina. Then our position in this case will be three. So we want our pause so we can go move things backwards like such. Okay, and then we're going to change our count, decrement our count. So that's what our code's going to do. We're going to use a for loop for. Now, oops, I like K. For loop using k for k equals for k equals where are we going to start from well we're going to start from this case it's basically reverse and so we start from our count to box number i mean sorry not from our count from the position that we want to delete to our count minus one for k equals our pause to our count minus one the second last box do and then we say error names box number k equals error names box number k plus one simple as that but we do have to decrement our number of elements my insert key you know that insert key in the keyboard very important <laughs> decrement our count the total number of elements we have to take one away from it and then I'm going to display there we go you see my display and over here nothing to delete we don't do anything exit means you know after that exit the processor will stop uh, this button click but if that if, if B found is true this is what will happen so I don't mean else here because I've got this exit in the beginning there right so let's go and see if this works Right, so I'm going to shall we insert Joe into box number no in the correct place sort and insert okay so there it is right so let's go and delete Joe so if I click on no, let's go delete John okay so delete click on John and then click on delete and then we go beep. John's gone, so we're back to six, and it works perfectly fine. So I hope you um, understood all of that. Just watch it again if you did not, and stay safe and keep working hard as you are.